Hello, my name is Pavan Shah and in this demo, we'll see how you can leverage PX Backup from Portworks to back up applications that are running on an Amazon EKS cluster backed by an Amazon EFS shared file system using read write many persistent volumes to a Portworks enabled Amazon EKS cluster uh, where Portworks can provide not just read write many or shared persistent volumes to your Kubernetes applications, but also read write ones in block applications to your Kubernetes applications. In this demo, we are using a simple Jenkins deployment uh, that's running on my EFS backed EKS cluster. And I'm, I'll use PX backup to back up my Jenkins deployment, store the snapshot in an S3 repository, and then uh, restore it to an EKS cluster that's running Portworks as the Kubernetes storage layer. So let's see all of this in action. So we are logged in to uh, a CLI interface, which has access to our EKS cluster backed by EFS. Let's run a few commands and make sure our Jenkins deployment is up and running. So uh, get nodes gives us three EKS nodes. Uh, get all in the Jenkins EFS demo namespace shows us the deployment, the service and the pod objects. And then if we do a get PVC in the same namespace, you will see that we have a Jenkins home PVC that's provisioned using the EFS demo storage class, which is in, in turn using the EFS.CSI provisioner. If we do a kubectl describe pods on our Jenkins pod in the Jenkins EFS demo namespace, you will see that this persistent volume, the Jenkins home PVC is mounted to the Jenkins home directory for our pod. This is where Jenkins stores all of its configuration information, the plugins that we download, the artifacts that we created. So this is where Jenkins stores its state, which is bound by a read write many volume provisioned by EFS. Now let's go ahead and access our user interface for Jenkins and look at the couple of customizations that we have done for our deployment. So we have a couple of uh, uh, pipeline and freestyle projects. If we go to manage Jenkins and look at the plugins that we have installed, you will see that we have installed a couple of additional plugins in, 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 in addition to the default plugins that Jenkins installs on a fresh deployment. So you'll see that we have a few plugins for Kubernetes, the Kubernetes CLI plugin, credentials provider, the Kubernetes plugin plugin, etc. So we have some sort of uh, customization and data generated. Now let's go to our PX backup user interface and see how we can use this uh, instance, our PX backup instance to protect the Jenkins app and restore it to a Portworks enabled cluster. For that, we have already connected our AWS account, a cloud account, and then added an S3 backup repository to store our backup snapshots uh, from our source uh, that will be used for migrating from our source to destination cluster. The EFS cluster is the EFS backed EKS cluster and the Jenkins restore cluster is the one that's running Portworks uh, again on an EKS cluster with a different version of Kubernetes. Let's go to the EFS cluster. Uh, our Jenkins app is running in the Jenkins EFS demo namespace as we saw earlier. You can click on the three buttons and you can either select individual resources. So you can either choose to just backup deployments or just backup persistent volumes or just backup the service object. Or in our case, we'll backup everything that's associated or being deployed in our Jenkins EFS demo namespace. So we'll hit backup and then give the backup job a name. So uh, this is for migration. So we'll use EFS to Portworks uh, and then Additional parameters that can be specified are like backup locations. This is the S3 bucket that was configured to store our backups. You can provision, uh, conduct an ad hoc or on-demand backup, or you can set a schedule. Also specify pre and post exec rules if your application needs it. Now you have kicked off a backup operation. So the PX backup talks to your EKS cluster that's backed by EFS. Uh, takes a snapshot, an application consistent snapshot, and stores not just the application data, but also Kubernetes objects and any application configuration you might have in the S3 repository and uh, reports that the backup job was completed successfully. Once uh, the backup is successfully completed, you can look at details around the backup from the PX backup user interface. So you can click on the button and then look at the, the different objects and the things that have been uh, included as part of this backup operation. And then let's just go to our 
destination cluster, which is the px restore cluster, and run a few commands to ensure that we don't have the application already running for the demo. So if we do a get all in the Jenkins restore namespace, you will see that we don't have any resources. If you do a get pvc, you will see that we don't have any persistent volumes already created for this demo. This is where we'll perform the restore and see the objects getting deployed. If you look at storage classes, since Portwox is already installed and we have configured a storage class for read write many persistent volumes, you will see that our px shared sc is a, a storage class that will dynamically provision file volumes or read write many volumes for us when needed. Now let's go back to the px backup UI and perform a restore operation. We'll give the restore operation a name. So uh, you can use any name, we'll use portworks hyphen Jenkins hyphen restore and then you can choose a destination cluster. So we'll move it to the Jenkins restore cluster instead of the EFS cluster. We'll do a custom resource because we want to map our EFS packed storage class to the PX shared SC that exists on the destination cluster. And then we'll do the same thing for namespace as well. So it was running on Jenkins EFS demo namespace. We'll restore it to a Jenkins hyphen restore namespace on the secondary uh, on the destination cluster. This is how you can customize your restore operations. You can also select all the resources uh, and have it restored on the destination cluster, or you can just select a few. We'll select everything as part of the restore operation and then hit restore. This is where PX backup talks to the EKS cluster, which is running Portworks, and then starts uh, the restore operation. So it copies my data from my S3 bucket and creates a persistent volume. And once the volume is up and running, it will go ahead and deploy my deployment object, service object, and eventually the pod. So if we do a watch command on the kubectl get pods command, you'll see that our Jenkins pod went from pending to container creating to a running state. And then if we do a control C out of this and look at a kubectl get all in the same namespace, the Jenkins restore namespace, you will see that we have our deployment object and a service object, which generated a new load balancer endpoint for us. If we do a kubectl get pvc, you see that we have the same Jenkins home pvc persistent volume that's attached to a Jenkins pod and it's created by the px shared storage class. So it's using portworks under the covers uh, to provision or to uh, give, uh, provide read write many volume to our Jenkins deployment. Let's copy the load balancer endpoint uh, and have it ready for uh, accessing our Jenkins UI. You can also look at details in the restore task and see what objects have been restored, what's the destination cluster, what was the name of the restore, which backup was used to restore it from. Simil this is similar to how we looked at the details when a backup job was successfully completed. Next, let's open up a new tab and navigate to the new Jenkins endpoint uh, on the correct port. So 8080 is the port for, uh, on which Jenkins uh, UI exists. So we'll navigate to the load balancer interface plus 8080 and wait for Jenkins to come online. Once it's up, uh, we should be able to log in using the same credentials that we logged in on our source side or our EFS backed Jenkins cluster. Uh, and verify that all the configuration data, not just the user credentials, but also the artifacts that we have created, the plugins that we have installed, all of that was copied over from our source, which was uh, EKS cluster backed by EFS to our destination, which is an EKS cluster backed by Portworx. This is how easy it is to migrate from a non Portworx to a Portworx environment. And that's it for this demo. Thanks for watching.